So in the course of about five days, I watched the entirety of Milo Murphy's Law, and all I can really say is this. But yeah, that's, uh, that pretty much sums up my thoughts on the show. If you like this video, please comment down below, subscribe, recommend this to your friends, and you know, um, power to the people. when they call me up, save me wishing for you, I'm missing I'm kidding, I will not just abruptly end it there without telling my thoughts, that would be, that would be rude. Milo Murphy's Law was created by Dan Pobermeyer and Jeff Swampy Marsh, the creators of Phineas and Ferb and longtime writers of Prime Family Guy, basically the early first four seasons, which is why it always had that really awesome cutaway sequence without being, you know, dragging on like modern Family Guy, but that aside. This show is about the principle of Milo Murphy's Law, which is where everything that can go wrong will go wrong, but it's basically channeled through this one guy. His name is Milo Murphy, played by Weird Al Yankovic. What a fun show, but it's just, the jokes are quick, they're fun, there's great visual gags, and it basically encapsulates my extremely childish humor, whilst also being quite intellectual, which is basically my daily struggle. Am I an adult? Am I a child? Or am I a man-child? But yeah, it just follows the events with him, his friend Melissa, and Zach, and just them trying to survive Murphy's Law affecting their daily life. And I don't know why, just <laughs> it's just such a positive show. Everything about it, like he, like how Milo just gets into all this stupid shit, but he just makes the best out of it, which is something that really we all need, especially today. And I don't know whether it's just the fact, the lack of sleep. I don't know whether it's the lack of sleep speaking, or the entire fact that I watch this in five days, and it's just the only thing that's in my memory right now, and... I'm all alone. That aside, I mean just <clears throat> great show. And it crosses over with Phineas and Ferb, the greatest show. No, I'm just kidding. It's not the great show, but it's it's just my childhood because you know it's Phineas and Ferb, and if you didn't have that as a childhood, clearly your parents didn't do a good job. I'm kidding, they probably did fine, but you know, it could have been it could have been like a it could have been, it, it separates the A tier from the S tier of childhoods. Just, I'm ju just saying. But let's, but let's get more intimate while we're talking about the characters. And I haven't changed my mic setting because this is definitely not me filming afterwards and after the fact, minus one continuity error up there. Okay, I feel like they're onto me. But anyway, that is like Milo. Weird Al Yankovic, hilarious person, very well acted, very amusing, extremely positive. And then there's his friend Melissa who's just, who's just one of those people who's just Extremely charming, charismatic, very strong and self-made of themselves, and, you know, goes along with the ride, but, you know, she actually has enough of a character and personality to... Now, Zach is basically just the normal person who's just experiencing everything that in Milo... <clears throat> it was... Zach is basically just a normal person first encountering Milo Murphy's Law, and he brings a good outside audience perspective to stuff that seems really stupid and outlandish, which is good, because it shows that the writers have enough self-awareness to write something like that, being a lens through Zack. And everyone else, all side characters are very interesting and fine. There's a lot of them, and I'd say if they don't get enough shine, they kind of make fun of that fact. But still, I would say very strong cast of characters, animation's very good. And you can tell there's times where they are cutting it a bit lazy, but you know, they're on a budget. And it's not a mega, mega successful show, so they're not gonna get the amount of branding that uh, other shows have the liberty of getting. But still, with what they have, they make do. All right, back to the normal setting, and Judy will pretend like nothing here has ever happened. But that aside, I would recommend the show, even though I do have some critiques with it which will involve major spoilers. All right, let's go. So, <clears throat> music. If you don't like music in shows, you will fucking be annoyed by like about one to two minutes every episode. 
and because I grew up in a house where my dad would constantly sing unnecessarily, it can trigger the shit out of me and when I'm watching with someone else. So that's the thing, because it still is, at the end of the day, a kids show, despite the fact that it means so much more to me. Yeah, there's also later in the series where Dr. Doofenshmirtz does come in as our main character, and he's him, but he's kind of more of a loser. Like, they wrote him as more of a, a washed-up hack. When, and yeah, yeah, sure, he was a loser in the show, but he, he just he's just awesome, and you felt bad for him and all that jazz, but this one, he just he feels like just some guy on your... He, before, he was basically that friend who nothing would go right for, but he was just so charming, you just had to keep watching, and he went from sort of that friend, but now he lives on your couch, and he's a bit lazier, and he doesn't pay rent. But yeah, other than that, I'd say, good show. It's good that Phineas and Fu is in it, and it's, just, it's a fun universe. I know I'm not supposed to be covering non-music stuff on here, especially with the complete aesthetic we have here, which is awesome, by the way. So yeah, please watch this show, or else it will get cancelled, and I'll have nothing to do, and I'll blame you all specifically for not watching it enough, and then it going away. Now, I know it's very, very evil of me to guilt trip people, especially with such a large audience I have. But still, do it, or else. Okay, thanks for watching. Adios.